<laughs> Hello and welcome to another Fireside Chat. My name is David Baines and uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Sasha Lipman and Nikolaus Hutter on the subject of impact investment, something which is really important as we look forward uh, and how we uh, implement many of the projects that are here at the Zero Project Conference this year. And I'm going to ask Sasha first of all, uh, our first question. And, and, and Sasha, more people than ever are probably aware of the importance of investments in business uh, due to programs like Dragon's Den and so on. But probably far fewer um, have heard of the impact investment. Um, how would you explain these to people? I would say that um, if you look at the overall landscape of investment, the impact investing is growing. And impact investing is about funding solutions or tech solutions or businesses which actually address relevant issues. And that's what we always say in Tech to Impact, that we are bringing more capital into the space of entrepreneurs who are addressing and solving issues of the society and the planet um, and have a business model around it, generating revenue. So they not just only focus on the profit, but what they want to make is a difference. And it can be a business. Why not? Mm -hmm. So this is a social return as well as a financial yeah. return. Yeah, we always say it's a double ROI, so return of investment and return on impact, what is something we should be striving for. And definitely to give you some of the greatest examples of businesses we are working with, as you guys all know, unfortunately, what's facing now as a Ukraine as a country is devastating. And one of the greatest solutions we are working with is called Bridgeify, is an example of accessible solution. Uh, which uh, provides a tool, an app, uh, to have a connection through Bluetooth without internet, without mobile, uh, to be able for people to communicate in the challenging situation we are right now as a country. So this type of businesses are the ones we're talking about who are able to generate revenue and to solve the relevant issue. And, and that's really interesting. And Nicolaus, um, maybe you can, every year at the Zero Projects, we hear amazing ideas, and many of them are planning to come to market specifically to benefit people with disabilities. And, and like any company, they, they might need investment. Um, how do you see the investing landscape currently? Uh, are we in the right mindset? And are we in a positive place to support and accelerate impact te technology and companies? Mm, to some degree, yes. Um, and uh, very much no. So the the, the this notion of impact investment is still seen as a sector, as an industry, as an asset class, and, and I would disagree with that. It's more like purpose-driven business, impact-oriented business is not, is not an industry, is not a sector. It's more a mindset, a way to look at the world. And if you apply that mindset, what you will see is that finance as we have it today is absolutely broken. It's not channeling the capital um, that is available. We're talking about seven to eight hundred uh, trillion dollars, seven to eight hundred thousand billion dollars in financial assets, in order to finance the sustainable development goals, which is a financing need of three to four trillion a year. So less than one percent of the financial economy would need to be channeled towards impact uh, to solve most of the problems that we currently face, and this includes everything. Oh. We lost you. You're, you're a little frozen there. Problem. In both the financial markets in particular, but also the real economy is. Sasha, is it, is, you, you may have some idea of what was going to be said there. Mindset. <laughs> Let's hope we get uh, Nicholas back. Um. While we're getting Nicholas back, Sasha, w w would you add anything to what was just being sure. said? Sure, uh, we've been discussing this with Nicholas for a while. Um, I hope he can hear us now. So, as he mentioned, there is enough capital. <laughs> Let's hope he can hear us. Have a stellar technology. Technology is not as bad as it seems in this moment. <laughs> There's a great never work with children, animals, or technology. I seem to have done all three recently. <laughs> um, oh, Nicholas, you're back. I think we got I you. Hope I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Sorry we got you that. back. Uh, you were just talking so, about how uh, the money that notion, needed to be migrate needed to be funneled towards the SDGs was such a small percentage of the capital that was available, and that's when we just started to lose you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so the markets are about allocating resources, efficiently allocating resources to those areas where they are most productively employed, and the the issue, I guess, is that so far. 
financial profit has been the only measure of, of, of success, of productivity, of value. And, and that has brought us up to where we are now. And I think the movement of impact investment and purpose-driven startups is to reconcile um, actual value creation, yeah, saving the planet and, and healing society, if you like, uh, addressing the SDGs with profitability. Because so at the moment, there's... The, is not necessarily a correlation. So it's, a, it's possible to be extremely profitable on the one hand while actually destroying value, destroying the earth, excluding people, exploiting people, and so on. And, and impact investment and, and uh, impact startups is about bringing that together. And it's that mindset shift that needs to happen. And it is happening. It is driven by um, factor markets, both for capital, but also for talent, and by the choices that consumers and businesses do in what kind of uh, products and, and services they're buying. And this, this, this transition, this, this paradigm shift, if you like, is, is, is going, fortunately, a lot faster than we were thinking even three, four, five years ago. So to answer your question, I think we're not in the right space, um, but things are moving in the right direction. And I think we're going to see a lot of um, very fast, very disruptive change and hope. And, and has that really been uh, about the influence upon investment of the turmoil we've experienced over the last uh, few years, the pandemic, climate change, the desire for social justice? Are those things that have really influenced the investment landscape, do you think? Well, I don't think it has influenced it so much. It has accelerated it. Because one thing that is really crystal clear in a pandemic is nobody is safe until everybody is. And that's very logic in a highly contagious um, you know, pandemic environment. But the same notion applies to any problem that we face about uh, social exclusion, poverty, inequality, climate change. We're all part of the system. And there is no us and them. And there is no here and away. And I think that is something that is slowly but surely beginning to trickle into the brains of people and decision makers um, and, and, and changing the way that, that we see, that, that we see uh, business and creating economic value and really reconciling impact, you know, making the world a better place and, and the planet um, and, act, and profitability and that one begets the other rather than one at the expense of the other. That's really interesting. Um, and Sasha, I mean, Listening to, to what we've said so far, what advice would you give to companies working in this space that are seeking investment where they do want to offer both a social return and a financial return on that investment? What advice would you give them? I would say that the first of all is take a step back and look at what you're doing and understand that what you're doing is the right thing. Mm. And business is shifting, economy is shifting. Maybe not as the pace we should have, but we are getting there. And to founders who are impact-driven, what we always say is something we, we definitely agree with Nicholas. There is more than enough capital. We are lacking exceptional entrepreneurs, and you're one of them. I think I've been working with startups for almost seven years now. And if I truly see a wonderful entrepreneur, is an entrepreneur who is solving the problem they can relate, or if it's an actual problem. If you're just building business for the sake of business, sure, you might fly, but... Does it make you feel better? Does it change something? No. So what, one thing I would definitely recommend to startups is to know your value. And it's not only monetary. What you do matters. It might be not as fast as the typical unicorn style of business grows. But what you do matters. It will pay off. And you just need the right support. And that's what Nicholas and, and Via Tech to Impact are doing regularly bringing startups together and accelerating them and, and giving them the understanding that you're not a niche, you're not an on top, cherry on top. Who you are, you are and real entrepreneurs who are solving problems as any other startup. You just pick the right one. That's a big difference. Mm. Nicholas, would you add anything to that as advice to companies? Well, yeah, yeah absolutely. I think the, the core, exactly what Sasha said, uh, entrepreneurship is creating value and the profit that you make is the part that A, can be expressed in monetary terms, that B, can be captured by your company. But that clearly is not the total value that is created. There's clearly the value that is uh, there for the customer who buys your product or service and which exceeds the cost that you charge them. A, and of course, there is the 
kind of karmic impact to society, to the environment, and so on. Yeah? And if you think about sustainability, which is zero footprint, don't do harm, yeah? one planet footprint, if you like, in, in ecological terms, this is no longer good enough. There's so much baggage, so much pollution, exploitation left in the system that plus minus zero is no longer good enough. Any Anything forward that we do needs to be regenerative from the ecological point of view and inclusive from the social point of view, because otherwise um, we're really looking at the end of so with, civilization and generation. And I, so, I, I guess... like, like Sasha said, you're on the right track. Just be, and, and, and things are moving in your direction if you're an impact-driven startup. And on the flip side of that, then, if we're going to encourage people to seek investment, how do we encourage more funds to be funneled in this direction? Sasha, how, do, how are we going to make that happen? That's a conversation we have on a daily basis with investors. Um, there are still a lot of investors who say, well, we don't do impact investing. And I always answer to them, do you invest in climate? Do you invest in energy? Do you invest in business growth? And they usually answer yes. So what I'm always saying to them, impact is about not the industry. It's about the, what you expect from the company. It doesn't mean they will have less financial returns. Please remember this to all the investors out there. The model we have right now is not sustainable. The model we expect companies and the valuation we give them or criteria of the valuation we give them is wrong. It's not going to hold for a long time. And if you want to be in the future of investment, if you want to invest in the next big thing, investing in impact is the one. If you look at the climate industry and people are, especially in the investment scene, they're freaking out about investing in hardware because it's not scalable. Well, look at the investments which were done in climate 20 years ago and where they are now, where the companies are now and how they're growing and how much valuation is there in the social, ecological, economical growth of society. So it's an old narrative saying that impact is charity. It's old. So there's a great line there, that the next big thing is impact. And Nicolas, would you agree with that or anything else you would add to that? No, I would, I would not wait. Uh, we need to reconcile um, profitability and, and financial profit and commercial profit with creating real true value. And for that, we need to understand what that means. And every socially and uh, environmentally driven startup and entrepreneurial team knows that and, and profit needs to be a consequence rather than the thing that we chase. Uh, so I would totally agree. That's wonderful. We're coming to the end of this chat and I suspect we could have spoken a lot more. It's such an important issue. But if you wanted to summarize where we are and where we need to be and how we get there, what would you say, Sasha? What would you say? Well, I guess I have two messages. One, if you're an entrepreneur already and you're in the impact space, go for it. You have a lot of support system. Come to tech to impact we're happy to help. If you're a young person looking into starting a business or building technology, make sure that what you do is solving something relevant. Don't just build startups for the sake of building them and creating another delivery dating platforms. We have enough of them. Um, and if you're in an investment scene or if you're investing, Look in the future. You can invest in something which is the next big thing and it's something which creates true social value. And be sure that profit will no longer be the key understanding of what is successful investment. And Nicolas, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I would agree. Um, impact business, purpose-driven business is a bit like the, like the internet in the early 90s. Nobody understood it. Um, it was either overblown or, 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 or misunderstood understood eBay was rejected um, by investors even in the late um, 90s Google was uh, burning through 500 million dollars which at the time was really 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 a lot of money um, uh, without having a business model knowing how to how to uh, um, how to make money out of it about 8 billion users per day so the investors very clearly understood that there must be some very significant value they just didn't have an idea how to monetize that and i think we need to go back to that kind of thinking understanding spotting real values solving meaningful problems that affect lots of people solving them sustainably meaning financially sustainably uh, and scalably and then the profits will follow and that's how it should be that's great i want to thank you both so much and i'll, I'll take away and say to our companies our entrepreneurs there are opportunities out there. There is capital out there. You can get investment for broken things. Um, and secondly, and really quite importantly to our investors, we are there. We can make a difference together. 
if we can connect those two together, we can make a real difference. So thank you very much, Sasha. Thanks for having Nicholas. us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, David.